us getting to know you. Can you explain that to us? So we are going to take some time over the next few minutes to get to know our trio. We will ask our trio some questions about their journey in Toastmasters. We'll find out a little bit about why they're here, what their focus is for the coming year. And if you have any questions that you would like to specifically ask a member of our trio, you'll have an opportunity to do so. about 
10 miles away from here. They're all Vols fans, and if you don't see my hat sitting over the table, that is a Vols hat. <laughs> I am team volunteers. Now, being from West Virginia, you wouldn't have thought that, considering the fact that I would have thought that it would be Hicksburg would be the team. But I never really had a college team. I graduated from Western, and that was just the team I gravitated to since everyone on my wife's side is a Vols fan, and I did not want to be an Alabama fan, or else I probably would not be standing here with you today. <laughs> but that's the team that I'm behind today, and hopefully they will win as well. <laughs>
things, uh, concepts and classes and skills that you learn here are really, it's really one of a kind type of experience. This uh, program has been shaped and molded and perfected over time. Pathways is a little bit bumpy. But once you get past the veneer, it's still Toastmasters, right? So it works. Toastmasters works. And I think we need to diversify who we're reaching out to and identify more places and people and organizations we haven't connected with and find more ways to get our foot in the door by just asking. And how can individual clubs partner with you and your role as club growth director to ensure that they are doing their part in just asking for these opportunities? If they don't know who I am, hopefully I can <laughs> And if you don't, please reach out. Again, we are all here to serve you, our members. And we have an open door policy, and I want to definitely commend the other members of the trio, Chris in particular, for doing even more to be open and available to our membership in this current year. We are, first of all, the people who kind of try to keep things moving along. And you have to know who those people are. Some of our members I've gone to clubs, and if you've been at Toastmasters for a while, maybe we don't carry a little in to it either way. And that's nothing, I'm trying not to say anything negative about anyone, but it's just the nature of the beast. Once you've been doing this for a while, you're friends with your club mates. You're, those people in your club may be uh, co-workers or they may be other uh, peers of yours with whom you've had uh, almost lifelong friendships. And sometimes that's where it stops. They don't really think about who's the new division director, who's my area director, who's in the trio. We need to be able to connect with all the strata in our organization, Middle Tennessee, East Tennessee, Virginia, anywhere else that we can, within District 63. We need to be able to connect with our membership and be available to them and also let them know that we're a resource because if they don't know who to contact and they have a lead or they have a new way for us to possibly form a new club, once we get a hold of the right person in the right place, who has access to the right pocketbook, we can get a club on the ground. <laughs> That's right. Am I right? Yeah. Corporate That's clubs right. special. Corporate clubs special. But community clubs as well. My, my club is a little bit kind of, it's kind of weird. No offense to you NASPA people out there. But it's a <laughs> corporate club that's open. So we have NASPA employees that are members, but you got weirdos like me that are actually came off the streets and say, God damn it. So uh, you don't know what you've got out there until you reach out and make those connections. But it's got to be a two-way communication. It's got to be a two-way exchange. And my uh, principal thing that I want to do for the membership this year is to be able to build those bridges so we can get our foot in the door and get those demo meetings off the ground and hopefully form new clubs. That's not to say we don't have a responsibility for retention and for everybody that's already here. We love you, please stay with us. We love you. But at the same time, my job is focused on building new clubs and also trying to get people involved in helping our clubs. Coaches, anyone? We need coaches, we need mentors, we need sponsors. Anything we can do to build our clubs, make them stronger, as well as trying to integrate new clubs into our organization, these are the things that I'm involved with. Wonderful. And my final question to you. Please share with us your most embarrassing Toastmaster story. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you, um, may have inadvertently put some truth serum into my cup before I came to this <laughs> But I will share that uh, story. Some years ago, I decided that I wanted to give a speech around National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And you can imagine there was a scene in Christmas Vacation where Cousin Eddie's standing out there in his um, BBDs in the winter, and he's emptying sewage out of his RV. Well, I decided to get up there and give a speech about this with um, almost um, no filter, oh. including some of the um, colorful uh, terms used when uh, Cousin Eddie was standing out there saying, what are you doing, Cousin Eddie? I'm just, if you, if you haven't seen the movie, watch it, you'll know what I'm saying. <laughs> that was a bad idea. I've given some pretty controversial speeches in my time. I've talked about some pretty crazy things. And those of you that know me know I can go into the stratosphere with anything if you give me an opportunity. <laughs> but I realized it's okay to, to moderate that a little bit. 
You don't have to be that explicit. And I look back at that now, and I'm like, what in the world was I doing? I didn't win table topics that day, if you can imagine. <laughs> but at the same time, it was a thoroughly embarrassing moment, but um, I got through it. All right, Kristen, same starting question. Tell us a little bit about your Toastmasters journey and what Toastmasters has meant to you throughout that process. I moved here to Middle Tennessee in 2018, but I started my Toastmasters journey in 2016. At lunchtime one day, I had a couple of coworkers and they were just about to leave to go somewhere and I said, where are y'all going for lunch? And they said, we're gonna go to a Toastmasters meeting. Can I come? And they said, sure. So I went to this meeting. Now let me caveat that by saying in the late 80s when I was in college, I went to one Toastmasters meeting and it scared the bejesus out of me. There was no way that I was ever going to go back to something like that because I was so afraid of getting up in front of somebody and speaking in front of a crowd and being embarrassed. But I went to this Toastmasters meeting and I thought, I think I can do this. I think I can. So then I went the next week, and by the next week, just two times, I thought, okay, I'm going to join. And then I joined on August 1st of 2016. Now, what has this journey meant to me? To me, it was all about personal development. I am the social butterfly. I'm the outspoken one. I'm the extrovert. I always like to talk to people. And it was learning how to talk to people correctly. And it was personal development journey for me because I was really pushing the personal development the secret and Bob Proctor. I was already studying all of that and I was already starting to coach. So I thought this would be a really great way for me to start learn to speak in front of great crowds of people and give them what my message is to the world. Thank you. Explain a little bit about your role as district director and what your focus is for District 63 in this program year. My focus as district director is really to serve. I'm here, ultimately, the responsibility falls on the district trio and the district director for everything that goes on in the district. So yes, I am responsible and I am the head of District 63. However, I'm also the head servant. So whatever it is that you need from me, I'm here to help you, and I'm here to help everybody here in the district. What is Toastmasters and our district's motto is we build clubs and we help all clubs in achieving excellence. Yes, in the past two years, in the past two and a half years, we've had so much attrition from clubs. When I take a look when I was club birth director and saw how many clubs we had and now see how many clubs we have, it can be a little disheartening. However, Toastmasters also saw that. Not just our district, but all over the world. And at international convention, I was in tears, literally in tears, when Toastmasters said, okay, here's the new standard for clubs to become distinguished. No longer do you have to have a minimum of 20 members. Net growth of and in the district, to become a distinguished district, a net growth of zero, which means if we lose three clubs and we gain three clubs, we have a net growth of zero, but we can still become distinguished. Now that doesn't have anything, nothing has changed as far as the educational requirements. So really, really, really focus this year on education and on going through pathways and getting those educational goals. Because at the end of the day, what are we all here for? Some people are here to be in a club and to get to know people and not really do anything. And some people are here really to go for what they want to go for in their life and actually have actual goals to become a distinguished Toastmaster or help their clubs. But I'm here to assist in any way possible. And this year, it's focusing on quality clubs, Toastmasters knows how to run a club, and they have all of the rules, and they've got everything set. And if you deviate from it, you may have issues. And also, club growth. We want to grow clubs. If a club is going to shut down, we need to find the root of that problem. What happened? Were they just not doing the program, or were they
they doing something else, or was it their corporation shut down and they stopped the funding? Well, what did the members want to do? Did the members want to continue with Toastmasters? Most of the times the members do. So what can we do about those? Thank you. My final question for you. You had mentioned in the past <laughs> that you ride motorcycles, correct? Yes. What has been your most memorable motorcycle ride? Well, I have a most memorable bad motorcycle ride, and then I've got a lot of memorable good motorcycle rides. I really enjoy taking our little scooters down to Chattanooga. Live up in Mount Juliet and have this little 250 Honda Helix scooter and a little CF Moto from China. And we got on these little scooters. And we went all the side roads, went to 70, and then we went to 111, and we went all the way down to Chattanooga in the mountains, turned right back around again, and then came back. The scenery was amazing. It was beautiful. There's really nothing like getting on a motorcycle and having that wind therapy. Now, that being said, I've also gone to Clarksville. We've also gone to Knoxville. And Falls Creek Falls was earlier this year. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. Tanya, I also want to make sure that you are evaluating me because I feel like this should go toward my pathway. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> All right, so we still have a few minutes with our trio, and at this point, I would like to open it up to any specific questions that anyone here in person or anyone with us on Zoom might have for any member of our trio or for our trio as a group, and we will open it up for a few questions. And if you don't start asking questions, I might just keep rambling for the next 10 minutes, and no one wants that. <laughs> yes, please feel free to ask. Okay, this is Michelle Holden. Hi, everyone in the Zoom land. <laughs> Here's my question. The three of you have always been incredible servants. When I think servant leadership, the three of you come to mind, uh, along with many of the other people that are in this room. So my question to you is this. We know what you do. We know what you're trying to do for us. In what ways, when the three of you are talking privately amongst yourselves, what do you need from us that you're not getting? Besides us you know, helping you grow clubs and give you recommendations, what is it that you need from us that you can ask of all of us right now? What do I need from everybody? I need communication. We are a communication organization, and if you don't tell us what's broken, and if you don't tell us what's wrong, and if you don't tell us, hey, I feel a little bit off, then we won't. Hello. <laughs> then we won't know. We won't have any idea. And in my regular job, I tell all of the people that I work with, if you have an issue, I need you to come to me first because I don't want to find out on the back end that you had this issue going on and you took it up to the vice president and I wasn't aware about it. We have a lot of... I could say a lot of power, but we have a lot more backing behind us as a trio to help you get what you need, but you have to help us by letting us know what is it that you need. And if you're missing something, or if you feel like you're not getting enough support, absolutely you have to tell us. Because we don't know what we don't know, right? Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. I will just uh, piggyback off what Kristen was saying. Another hat that I wear is that I served with her in the State Guard. She actually recruited me into it. And um, so I can take orders from Kristen both here and there. <laughs> but it's incredible the team we are. We have a focus on the mission. I just went through Officer Basic course recently, and there is a focus on maintaining that focus, right? Why are we here? What is the overarching purpose we're here to accomplish? I ran against him for club growth director, boss, and I worked with her and have had an interesting relationship with both of these individuals, both in terms of being competitive and being cooperative, and we still work together almost seamlessly. Why? 
because we have the same focus. We have the same basic drive to see this district succeed. I think the world of both of these folks, they both bring inspiration and wisdom into my life in ways that only they can. I admire them greatly. And we have to be cohesive as a team. So why am I saying this to you all? I'm saying that we, as a district, must remember our mission to build clubs and to improve the lives of our members and to do what we can to propagate the message about, disseminate the message of Toastmasters and why it matters to us individually and what it means to us corporately. That's what I'll leave with you on this particular topic is keep in mind the mission. We all are here to achieve that mission. That may be a military-esque way of looking at it, but it's still the same basic point. That mission is the core of our organization, and that is what makes us or breaks us as a district. And for those of you on Zoom, if you didn't hear Michelle Holden's question, she was essentially asking what we can do for our trio to help them be effective in what they're trying to do. Any other questions, either from anyone here in the group? Okay, yes. Question for the trio. Do you care to come up and speak in the mic? <laughs> we discovered they can't hear on, on Zoom. <laughs> Masters on and off for about 20 years. I originally chartered with the Caterpillar Club because I used to work with Caterpillar. Oh That's where wow. I started. Now, my question for the trio I know that everybody has their own individual story as to how they got into the Toastmasters and how they progressed in Toastmasters. But was becoming a part of the trio kind of like a goal you? aspire to or climb to or then how did how did you actually get into that particular role or how did you feel that you should be or wanted to be in the particular role that you serve now? Oh, that's a good question. Excellent question. Who wants to answer that first? Okay. So my reason being in the trio is actually it's it's a twofold reason. Okay, one as an introvert, one thing that we sort of hang our hat on is any time being in the front of anything, we in essence cower in the back and let someone else do it. This. <laughs> forced me in actually going as an area director to a division director and then proceeding up through the trio forces me to get out of the personal comfort zone that I am naturally attributed to going back into. So this forces me that I have to reach out and talk to everyone and get comfortable with talking to everyone because I don't have a choice. So that is the one reason. Second, I enjoy helping anyone and everyone out with whatever their personal and group goals are. Whatever everyone is striving for, if I can be just a small avenue to get them there, I'm all for it. I'm the first cheerleader there, and I'm the first person to offer assistance because I just have a personal servant heart. And that's the one thing that People poured into me to get me to this point, to get me confident enough to actually be able to present. I want to give back. And that was the one way that I felt like I could give back is to do the leadership roles in the district and then maybe possibly beyond if, you know, I'm led to go that down that path. But that's the reason why I decided to do Trio, just because of the servant part plus the fact is, I have to break out of that comfort zone of letting everyone else take the lead and me being in the passenger seat of it. We 
correct me? <laughs> when I got into Toastmasters, I didn't even know what a district director was. I had no idea what a trio was. I didn't know what an area director was. All I knew was the club level. And then when I went to my first contest, and I believe it was an international contest, at that time, I met the current district director in District 50, which was in Texas. And I thought, ooh, man, I was just like this really, really high up there guy, you know, somebody who's like really untouchable. And I thought, well, maybe one day I'd like to do that. Well, fast forward a couple of years, and I was division director, and another division director in Division C, and I decided to run for club growth director because you need to have two people run for the position every year. Well, I was also on the district leadership committee, finding out a couple of months later that she cannot be on the DLC and run for an office in the district. So just remember that if Madi comes to you and, and asks you to be on the DLC and you want to run for an elected position, don't get on the DLC. So I had to drop out. And so did the other candidate. So we had the spring conference, and then I thought to myself, I'm off the hook. <laughs> I don't have to worry about this anymore. And then a couple of weeks after the conference was over, I got a phone call from the incoming district director asking me if I would like to be appointed to become club growth director. That's how it started, and then I progressed on from there. Good story. Once again, there's too many mail orders, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. Sometime back, before things got really weird, you know, the, the um, BCE and the after COVID, time that we're in now, but back before COVID, when we had our district executive committee meetings in person at uh, Cumberland Mountain State Park near Crossville, Tennessee, I was at the time a fledgling area director and uh, my first time attending any sort of district leadership level function. And I thought, hmm, this is kind of cool. I might want to be a part of this at some point. I, I was just like trying to get my leadership credentials for my first DTM, right? I just wanted to do something at the district level, get in, get out, and get done with it. But I decided to do something different. I got a little more ambitious, but I saw the way I could make a difference in the organization that I love. I do a lot of things, but this you know, we're not going important to me. That's why I'm standing before you today. And each of us, I think, has to have a certain bit of ambition, a certain part of passion, has to be tied together like this, like a coaxial cable wave. But that's the idea. Put that ambition, that passion together, pursue leadership. It's worth it. What you learn when you have to be a servant leader, as Kristen very pointedly pointed out, very wisely pointed out. That's the crux of what we do. And I had, I've had the honor to serve with uh, Gene Coy and Stacy Thomas and Madi and these fine folks, and we go from here. But what, a, what an incredible group. What amazing people. When you have people of that magnitude, and I, I, I'll say everybody who else I've had a chance to serve with at any level of the district, let me just say that, everyone. These people that have been so kind and so into my life, the least I can try to do is give something back. I've learned so much from all of these people. This organization is really passionate about what we do, and it's really here for the members. So I think at the end of the day, being on the trio is, for me, the principal way that I see that I can give something back. I like my speech awards. You all probably know that. I like to be a little competitive sometimes. But at the same time, being able to see a real difference that I made during that span of time, during that term that I was in office, that I made a difference in this organization that's made such a difference in my life and in the lives of everybody in this room and beyond. I think that's the real motivation. That's really what gives me the drive to continue the service and to go from here. <laughs>